I wanted to write a book about Thomas Hennel because I think he's an artist who deserves to be much better known. Uh, I first saw his work about uh, 22 years ago in an art gallery in London and it made a strong impression on me. Thomas Hennel's lifelong love of the English countryside was instilled in childhood and inspired by the fields, farms and woods which surrounded Ridley Rectory, his birthplace and the Hennel family home. There are some lovely descriptions of Thomas Hennel by his friends, uh, one of whom, Vincent Lyons, who painted a very fine portrait of him, said that Hennel was in every way distinctive. Uh, John Rothenstein, the director of the Tate Gallery for many years, wrote in his diary in 1940, on the day he met Hennel, in the morning... Thomas Hennel came to see me. A tall, awkward, rustic chap, but one of obvious sensibility, and, I should think, of complete integrity, showing only slight traces of the nervousness described in the witnesses. The Witnesses is a remarkable book, uh, an autobiographical book uh, by Hennel, which was published in 1938, which describes Hennel's experiences in three different mental hospitals, as they were then called, following a diagnosis of schizophrenia in 1932, or when Hennel was 29. So Hennel was for three years a full-time hospital patient. Uh, with his severe illness, uh, he suffered from terrifying and debilitating uh, visual and auditory hallucinations, and he was forbidden from painting and drawing by his doctors uh, for much of his time in hospital, until finally, when he was in the third of the three hospitals to treat him, Claybury Mental Hospital, he had a very sympathetic doctor who encouraged him to paint, and doing so really gave Hennel a pathway out of his illness. Hennel did uh, recover in the sense that he had a very full and um, rewarding life, and he became a war artist, of course, in uh, 1943, an official war artist, and for those last two and a half years of his life, he really produced what Edward Borden thought were some of the most outstanding watercolours of the 20th century. Hennel's pictures tell a fascinating and important story. Um, the pictures from his whole lifespan do that, but particularly those during the war, whether he was recording the war at home in the period before he became an official war artist, or those made in that capacity where he was serving as a war artist abroad, they really do give an insight into an era. Hennel tragically and probably horrifically died in uh, Surabaya in Indonesia um, and I'm pleased that I was able to at least shed some light on what happened to him and to say for the first time the date on which he was last seen, where he was stationed when he disappeared, and to put his disappearance into the context of what was happening in Surabaya at that time. All of the effort um, put into the book, uh, for my part, I feel is, has been worthwhile because of the man that he was.